now that Congress has finally published its damning report on Boeing and the 737 MAX 8 series, it's time to ask a very big question. Not what went wrong, but why did Boeing mess up? And this is a film I've been wanting to do for ages, because now the chain of disaster has become clear. Why did Boeing get it so wrong? And it's fascinating. And in some ways, it's not all Boeing's fault. It was actually Boeing reacting to the airline's needs. So let's go back in time and understand that the Boeing 737 was a design from the late 50s, early 60s, and I'm going to call it, and I'm going to keep on using this analogy, it's the little old grey Massey Ferguson tractor of the airline industry. It's tough. It's cheap. It starts. It's basic. But it has nothing new about it. And for years, the little old grey Massey Ferguson Boeing 737 was the workhorse of the airline industry. They were the world's most popular jet. And Boeing sold lots of them, but they had other aircraft in the fleet. You know, they had the 727, which was even older. They had, interestingly, the 757, which we'll talk about a bit in a minute because it's key to understanding this story. And there are big planes, the 767, the wide-bodied 747, and the 777, a world-beating plane for past times. But let's go back to understand what airlines wanted. So a whole new model emerged in the end of the 20th century, the beginning of the 21st century, with low-cost airlines, with seats costing a pound, a euro, a dollar. And to do that, airlines needed to cut down their biggest expense, and that's fuel. And you have to understand this about airplane design. There is only one factor that designs an airplane, and that is its engines. All aircraft are designed around the engines, where they're fitted, how powerful they are, where the fuel is. You build an airplane from the engines outwards. That's how it works. And then along came Airbus Industries. And the big difference with Airbus Industries, let's go with this tractor analogy. So the 737, this little old grey Massey Ferguson tractor, the Airbus A320 series was your brand new John Deere tractor. Fly-by-wire, triple redundancy, computer controlled. What would you prefer to plough your fields with? Well, there's arguments both ways. Do you want the reliable workhorse or do you want this incredibly sophisticated, fuel-efficient, modern tractor? Hmm, and that's the decision that the airlines had to make. And there's two classic case studies here in Europe. Ryanair with their old 737s, exclusive, and EasyJet with their brand new A320s exclusively. And the point of having an exclusive airframe for your airline makes a lot of sense. It means all your pilots are interchangeable. Pilots need something called a type rating to fly a particular type of plane. So if they're all 737 trained, they can fly any of them. And that equally applies to maintenance, ground crews, and the rest of the crew on board a single type of airplane. So airlines like sticking with one type. All accidents happen because of a chain of events. And what I'm clearly going to explain to you today is the chain of events that led up to the disastrous decisions of Boeing that led to the Max 8 disaster. And the first chain is this. Remember the early 737s. These are the engines that were fitted. Small diameter, cigar-shaped 
jet engines, but the world changed. Environmental concerns, fuel economy, and noise meant that these high bypass fan ducted engines were the bee's knees of the 21st century. But there was a problem, and the problem is that the 737 is too close to the ground. Boeing did come up with an interim solution, and if you're a plane spotter, you will know that you can spot a 737NG next generation, not no good, next generation 737, because it has this. Look, the engines are square or flat on the bottom because they needed the ground clearance. And then the second link in this chain connected. American Airlines went out and bought Airbus A320s because they were fuel efficient and Boeing didn't have anything like that in their catalog. But did they? And this is pretty interesting and new information for you now here on this channel today. Yes, Boeing had an alternative to the 737. Who's ever heard of the Boeing Yellowstone aircraft? Uh, no. Well, you kind of have. Let me explain. Boeing knew that they needed to replace the 737. It was the gray Massey Ferguson tractor that the airlines loved, but it wasn't going to have a future. It was too close to the ground and it was too clunky. They needed a modern new series of planes, which they codenamed secretly the Yellowstone Project, and they designated them Y1 as a 737 replacement, Y2 as a slightly bigger, higher capacity airplane, we'll talk about that in a minute, and the Y3 as a replacement for the 777. But it didn't really happen. Well, it did in a bit. They did build the Y2. The 787 Dreamliner is a Y2 from the secret Yellowstone project. But for some reason, they didn't go ahead with the Y1 as a replacement for the 737. A fateful decision. And at the same time, they scrapped the 757, which was also a single-aisled commuter plane. And that's a very interesting story. So Boeing's marketing department had nothing to sell. They can't put these big diameter bypass engines underneath the wing of a 737. And they had nothing on their books they could sell to airlines. So they went to engineering and said, fit these big damn engines on the old 737. Engineering must have had a conniption. I mean, they don't fit. They had very few choices. On top of the wing? No. On the tail? No. But they did come up with a potential solution, which is another link in the crash chain. You all know what these are. These are called pylons, and these hang engines under and forward of the wing. Look at a 747. So the Boeing 737 team said, well, I suppose if we put pylons on the wing and hang these giant engines high up and to the front, we could have enough ground clearance so they don't hit the ground when they're taking off and maneuvering. Okay, but there was an enormous problem. If you place these big diameter, heavy new engines way up front, hanging out the front of the wing, the center of gravity, the pitch, the stability of the old Massey Ferguson gray tractor is messed up. But they were forced to do that, so they went ahead and hung these giant General Electric Rolls-Royce engines up the front of the old tractor. And they flew it, and it flew 
terribly. It had this enormous problem and it's called over rotation. Remember this, we're going to see this film twice because in a new context, you'll see how terrifying this film really is. Sure, it looks amazing. This is a Max 8 taking off as a promotional video. And just notice how it climbs like a lost angel, like a rocket in the sky, partially because of the camera angle, but it certainly has an enormous climb rate and that's inherently dangerous. There's a disaster waiting to happen if your plane pitches up too fast and it's called takeoff stalls and it's almost completely unsurvivable and it has happened. When you take off, you pull back on your control yoke and the plane takes off at a nice gentle angle. But if you pull back and the plane leaps up into the air like a rocket, the air over the wings can separate as you pitched up too high and you mush down into the ground. And there is a counterintuitive solution to saving that, and that is pushing the stick forward. But you're only a few hundred feet above the ground, so all pilots, when they're crashing into the ground in a stall, pull the stick back to hold them up. Well, in fact, they're making it worse. What you do have to do is push the stick forward in a takeoff stall incident, but it takes immense training and foresight to do that, and also, the 737 and all large airliners take time to react. If you did push forward, there would be a delay before you decided to do that. You push forward, the airplane then has to react, reconnect the air over the wing, you've, you've hit the ground. So Boeing had to fix the potential take off stall over pitch problem. And this is a bit of a rant, but let's just clarify Boeing. Because people say, poor Boeing, they're going to lose all this business. Well, a lot of people who work on the Boeing commercial aircraft industry plant might lose their jobs. But Boeing aren't going bust. Boeing is a corporation. Boeing make drones. They make bombs. They make all the fighter planes. They make lots of things. The commercial airline wing is only one part of their corporation. Let's not feel sorry for Boeing because Boeing messed up. The test pilots, the engineers all went back to marketing and said, this isn't going to work. And they were told, make it work. And the only solution was to put in a secret nose pitching down computer system called MCAS that would stop this potential over rotation due to the fact that they'd hung these giant engines on the old Massey Ferguson tractor, which wasn't going to work. So taking a leaf out of the Boeing fighter plane book, fighter planes are inherently unstable. A commercial airliner with its dihedral wing, when you take your hands off the control, the airplane levels out and flies along nicely. In a jet fighter plane, you take your hands out the control and it tumbles out of the air. So they have to have an MCAS type system in fighter planes to assist the pilots. So they said, well, why don't we just put that in the Boeing? The unstable airliner can be fixed with this fighter plane hidden computer system. And we don't need to tell anybody because it'll only come on if there's a problem. So they didn't tell the FAA, they didn't tell the airlines, they didn't retrain the pilots, they didn't even tell maintenance. It wasn't even in the manual. MCAS was a hidden system. And now we're gonna return and look at this footage again. Wow. Now here's a startling revelation about this footage. 
which you probably didn't realize. This is a footage of an out of control 737 MAX 8 airliner taking off with out MCAS. Because this is not the maneuver that you want to fly on your holiday with Ryanair. So Boeing wanted to show off in this video the power and climb characteristics of their engines, but they knew this would never be available to airlines. So I believe that this plane, the one that you saw in that video, had a switch that switched off MCAS, and that switch was not available in the commercial 737 MAX 8 series that they sold throughout the world. In fact, the MCAS system was just hidden. And all the time this was going on, the FAA who should have overseen the problems, the inherent problems that the test pilots, the engineering department were having, were doing nothing. They were letting Boeing tell the FAA, it's all fine. And then the crashes happened. Tragic waste of life, driven entirely by the airline's greed and Boeing's stupidity. So how could Boeing have fixed the Max 8 problem? Well, the answer is the 757. It's a commuter-sized plane and it's high up above the ground. You can put these brand new fuel efficient engines on a 757. It would have worked and lots of people told Boeing that's what they should have done. And Boeing really need to update the old gray Massey Ferguson 737. The Yellowstone, the Y1 project has to be relaunched. Come on Boeing, get into the 20 first century and stop pushing the old tin. The truth is out there.